Hey, let's talk productivity. Today, I give you an efficient solution on hand how you can manage all your tasks and events across various workspaces in a single overview. This is part of a bigger ecosystem, but today let's focus on building an overview around Notion, Todoist and your calendars. I also show you why this solution is significantly better and way cheaper than setups which rely on services like tosync.com. Sounds tempting? Let's get into it. Before I show you the solution in action though, let me shortly add a bit more context. How do you organize yourself? Most probably you work at least in two different workspaces. One is business related and the other one is for private stuff. Maybe you even run more than just one business. So how do you keep an overview and plan across those multiple workspaces? Particularly talking about tasks and events. This becomes increasingly important if you have rather flexible working hours. Notion Calendar is a great tool. So why not just use that? Well, it only supports tasks from Notion and events from Google Calendar. So having only one account outside the ecosystem prohibits getting an overview. Also, you cannot change properties like status and priority of a task here, but have to jump over to Notion every time. Furthermore, what if you don't work with Notion at all? So instead, we need a more flexible solution to combine all our tasks and events. Most tools are designed for one specific purpose, which they are good at. Starting with tasks, to do this is a great choice. It's built on simplicity and clarity and thus has a great user experience. Now, if we can sync all our tasks from all our workspaces into this single tool, then we can easily work with our tasks and prioritize them beyond their origin. And what about our events? That's where Fantastica comes in. It not only supports every calendar out there, but also has a native integration for tasks. More specifically, Todoist. So forget about those ugly workarounds where you sync tasks as events into a calendar, that is bad practice and usually is just terrible. No, within Fantastical, you can reschedule tasks, edit their properties, and tick them off without ever having to leave the tool. By the way, all the mentioned tools can be used within their free tier. Now, let me show you this in action. Let's start with Notion. Here is a list of tasks which can be embedded into more context like projects, clients, processes and whatever else you can implement with the flexibility of Notion. Quick side note, as mentioned in the beginning, I only show the sync for Notion today, but this concept can be extended fairly easily to support other platforms as well, like Asana, Trello, Airtable, you name it. So from here, all planned tasks, those which have a due date set, or tasks which are marked as focus, meaning they are selected to be worked on shortly, are synced with Todoist. This filter is mainly for efficiency reasons, yet the focus flag has even more meaning to it, but I will explain this in a future video. It is about a weekly planning functionality. Here are those tasks from Notion. They are synchronized in the background in both directions including their name, status, due date, and priority. Also, you can jump to the origin anytime using this link. The smooth transition using native apps again adds up to the UX, both on desktop and mobile. Colors matter. The priorities, one through four in Todoist, are mapped to the quadrant of the Eisenhower matrix, except the numbers two and three are swapped. The intention is definitely not to rank unimportant tasks over important ones. It's more because of the colors to do as chose for priorities. Also, since we are sorting by priority, urgent tasks are urgent. If you don't pay certain bills on time, you might get into trouble, right? So you have to see those tasks further up in the list. Because Notion has more flexibility, the priorities have proper names instead, yet the colors match. There is also specialty about the status. Here in Notion, there are two more options being done and obsolete. The done state represents a completed task in Todoist, and the obsolete state is a safe way to delete tasks. On one hand, Todoist can never cause a data loss in Notion, which is the true data source, and using the state within Notion can actually trigger a delete event for Todoist. But don't worry, if you delete a task anyway, it will be removed from Todoist at the latest with the next full sync, which I will explain later in this video. Thanks to webhooks, the sync usually happens within five to seven seconds. So as you can see here, if I make a change in Notion, it is applied to Todoist fairly quickly.
and also the other way around. This direction works even slightly faster. Just for comparison, tusync.com would take at least two minutes, even on their priciest tier. I don't know how you feel about this, but to me it is a bad user experience, and you will see later what I mean. Now, this is only one workspace, which is represented in the Duis as a project. You can of course set up a sync for another Notion workspace, or as in this case, just create a separate project for let's say private tasks. Now comes the interesting part. Using the today or upcoming view, it is possible to see all tasks across multiple workspaces as soon as they have a due date. And using filtered views, you can also create combined views of unscheduled tasks and more. The inbox is a great place to quickly capture new tasks. Let me quickly create one. Later, you can drag them easily into the belonging workspace and they get synced over immediately. As long as a new task remains in the inbox, you can even add a description, which will then be moved over to Notion during the initial sync. The inbox also works exceptionally well with Siri and even Apple CarPlay. I remember building Apple shortcuts for Notion before. They were everything but reliable. Now let's take it even one step further. In my opinion, Fantastical might be the most powerful calendar while avoiding clutter and ornamentation. There are two different views representing a combination of tasks and events. So basically everything with a valid date. The list view shows what's up next and the calendar view gives the bigger picture. What I probably find the most fascinating is that you can drag around tasks and events around here in the calendar and this way plan your day or week across multiple apps and workspaces. Also, you can drag a task into the calendar and thus set a due time as well. So now you have three fundamentally different perspectives. One, rich in context, talking about Notion or similar. Second is a view of all your actionable tasks. And third, a bird eye view across everything timed. Next up, let's take a look at the technical side. Creating a two-way synchronization is very simple. Just get the tasks from both sides, compare them, and update them accordingly on the other side, right? No, it's way more than that. Believe it or not, synchronization has a lot to do with UX. Even if it's running in the background, there are a lot of design considerations to make so nothing unexpected happens. I like to say that bidirectional synchronization is a supreme discipline. Well, I guess this solution should prove that yet again. You know, if we'd own the systems and their interfaces, there could be a relatively easy solution for that, but in most cases we don't. And since every API is different, it always needs to be implemented in a custom way. It can also mean that, for example, the quality can suffer, like the sync period or which fields can be updated in which systems. Real-time sync makes it particularly difficult, yet it is essential for a good UX. My goal was trying to keep the balance between reliability and simplicity. That means building a solid and stable process while keeping the complexity relatively low so it is easily clonable and requires only a few dependencies. So coming back to this example here, I guess you can tell that there needs to be done a whole lot more. Instead, it needs to look somewhat like this. Don't worry, I won't go through every detail. Instead, I'll rather explain some key aspects. So generally speaking, there are three different workflows. A full sync, which runs daily to fix inconsistencies, which might happen during the day, since we cannot rely 100% on webhooks. And one workflow each for the differential sync triggered by the Notion or Todoist webhook. Additionally, here in the top, there are two small workflows, which help during initial setup, which I'll cover in a separate video. The link is down in the description. Let's take a deeper look into the full sync. In the beginning, we define some globals. Based on the position of this node in the workflow, it runs first and can be referenced from anywhere within the rest of the workflow. Then we gather all the relevant tasks from both Notion and Todoist. Notion is mapped to Todoist since we are updating mostly that side. For referencing, the Todoist ID is stored in its belonging Notion task. After comparing the items, they are being processed in different branches depending on whether they have been updated or do not exist in one of the sources. Three key aspects here. Right after an update happened in Todoist, 
An entry is pushed to Redis containing the Todoist task ID, which prevents the workflow handling the Todoist webhook to process the request again, which would otherwise cause an endless loop. The Redis entry expires after 15 seconds. This results in a minor limitation that changes should not be made in both systems simultaneously within a 15 to 20 second timeframe. Why Redis? We don't need to store data permanently. It is easy to set up and there is a free cloud here available. Sections can only be updated through the so-called sync API in Todoist, which has certain request limitations. That's why I use batching here. Mainly the REST API is used, since otherwise it would unnecessarily blow up the complexity. An email summary, which is an optional feature, is being sent with some details about every change applied, so the user has the ability to detect unwanted changes and fix those manually. Here is an example. Let's continue with the differential sync triggered by the Notion webhook. So it executes whenever a task in Notion has been created or updated. Here at the beginning, there is some additional logic which makes the input compatible with the Notion webhook emulator, an alternative to the native webhooks from Notion, in case you don't want to pay a monthly fee for a paid Notion plan. Believe it or not, it works equally, if not even more reliable than the native solution. So definitely check that out. Link is in the setup instructions of this workflow template, which is linked down below. So what happens here? First of all, we check if a Redis entry with the Notion ID exists, which would indicate to skip further processing. This could have been created by the other differential sync. If it is not the case, we retrieve the Notion task again, even if we got the payload through the webhook call. This is to prevent lately arriving triggers from overwriting outdated changes. After that, the mapping happens, so it can be compared easily with the belonging to Doer's task. This is followed by a bunch of logic to determine what actually happened before updating the other side accordingly. Also here, the Todoist ID is being locked by Redis for the other diff sync. Speaking of which, the workflow triggered by the Todoist webhook works quite similarly, except for a few specialties. First of all, webhooks in Todoist are registered for the entire app containing all your tasks across all your workspaces, or projects as we store them in Todoist. Therefore, if you sync multiple workspaces with Todoist, you need to split the webhook request by the project IDs and redirect it to separate workflows, as the used Notion nodes must likely use different credentials. An example of this router is shown right here. There is one more difficulty when trying to check for completed tasks in Notion, which is that they cannot be retrieved through the get many tasks endpoint leaving the only option to try retrieving the task and check for specific error messages. Only problem that this does not work together with the automatic retry and fail feature built into any end nodes. That's why here a custom loop is used, which only iterates a couple of times if an unexpected error happened. Retry and fail is generally enabled on all API request nodes to allow for a small margin of error. Also worth mentioning is that we save some additional information to every execution containing some metadata about the workflow, mostly IDs, which makes it easier to debug and search for executions in case something went wrong. And yeah, this should cover the most important aspects of this solution. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. As always, a link to the free template is down in the description. The setup related video is also linked there. That's it for this time. See you soon.